Good morning. Today is the 16th of March uh, 2022 and in a couple of days India is going to celebrate its festival of colors Holi. Here is wishing all my Indian viewers a very happy Holi. That said, uh, in the last couple of years in this channel, I have posted a lot of content around digital technologies and how digital technologies is changing the business landscape around us, how incumbent companies are responding, the, their strategies, and, and the, quite, a few, uh, quite a few videos around the VFSI landscape. It has been my desire to also focus on another very, very important sector, which is healthcare. Now, healthcare is a fast sector. It uh, it is uh, the data explosion in healthcare is very significant. Forty eight percent CAGR on health data only, much more than big data, making healthcare one of those most significant industries that are undergoing digital disruption. Now. Uh, Today's uh, content is, is, is a short take around different aspects of healthcare, which will be backed up by more deep dive content around specific sub-segments of healthcare. Having said so, uh, you know, typically in the United States and in advanced countries the, and in developed countries, 18% of the CAGR is, is healthcare expenditure. In Europe, it is anywhere between 10 to 15 percent, depending upon which part of Europe you are. In India, it's an abysmal 1.8 percent right now, which is going to go to 2.5 percent, a significant jump, but very, very minuscule compared to the population and the complexity. Therefore, healthcare, health in itself, needs to become uh, more productive. And also in the Indian context, you know, 80% of our healthcare expenditure goes through uh, is spent on four non-NCDs, uh, which are chronic diseases in terms of diabetes, hypertension, cancer, and cardiovascular diseases. And many of these diseases, barring cancer, can be managed through lifestyle changes. Today in this short video, we're going to talk about what are the technology imperatives in healthcare and therefore what are the things that we need to be aware of as citizens and also the Government of India's policy intervention. Now, I will not get into policy interventions of the Government of India, but to leave you with the fact that the Government of India's uh, uh, India's National Digital Health Mission, where every Indian is going to get a digital health ID, Pradhan Mantri Jan Oshadhi Prayojana, which is the biggest uh, pharmacy that is being sponsored, and, and also the AI or artificial intelligence interventions to make digital, uh, to make healthcare affordable to all of us, are significant moves by the strategic moves by the government of India. But more about it later as I take you to the main section in terms of what is happening in digital health. Digital health, a preview. Now, important thing to recognize is, is a concept of megatrends. Megatrends are social and economic factors that happen over a period of time and have a significant impact on how we operate and how businesses operate. Now, typically, uh, megatrends have been studied by experts for over about four or five decades and, and important megatrends as we stand today are around the aging population, which is the world is getting older, 13% of the population of the world is going to be more than 65 in soon, um, uh, in non, not uh, a distant future. A huge amount of urbanizations and cities are going to become major markets as against regions being markets. And healthcare, in terms of healthcare spend, by 2050, healthcare spend will double and in almost 20 to 30% of GDP of certain countries. And World Economic Forum ex estimates NCDs or chronic diseases will cost dollars 47 trillion globally by 2030. And as I mentioned before, the volume of health data is growing at a rate of 48% outpacing the growth of big data in itself. So healthcare, ripe for disruption, a lot of the data getting pounded in. And the most important thing is the big, big movement in healthcare is reactive from reactive health to preventive and personalized care which basically means that you know you do not attend to a condition once the, the, the condition has set in but you make lifestyle changes and choices so that the condition doesn't actually happen now on the left hand side of this slide you have the aging population which is the significant demographic shifts while the world is getting older some parts of the world which is in india and china is getting distinctly younger which is called the youth bulge 
as a result of the change in demographics the healthcare expenditure and the pension costs are going to increase significantly and to be and and, um, and think about it at a 20 to 30 percent of gdp in some economies will make healthcare unaffordable unless there is a change in the way health is administered and health consciousness becomes significant which is how does it become more preventive in nature so uh, how what kind of lifestyle do i intend to lead and and how does data help me to do so so that i live fitter and longer without going for primary or tertiary care and therefore you know lifestyle uh, health awareness is becoming a big thing fitness and so on and so forth we have wearable computational cells health data monitoring leading to lifestyle changes now we lifestyle changes wellness food and diet is again becoming a very 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 big industry now if you look at inc 42 uh, data you know the amount of startups that are getting funded in the food category and the health category and one the kind of of apps that are getting funded to make lifestyle changes is significant in india as well now when we go to reactive to personalized care there is also with the technology singularity as as technology becomes more and more affordable and usable huge amount of health models are emerging and these models could be omni-channel models b2b models d2c models which is basically the telehealth model and in indian context tata health the tata group is investing big time in digital as you could see in different uh, dimensions you know in in retail uh, either in the form of chroma big basket tata click and therefore another very big investment of tata health uh, uh, on, of the tatas is on digital health they've already had significant strategic investment in curefit which is a wellness app and has a significant presence right now in young india so so the tatas are making very big moves and the most significant moves in the digital of which healthcare is one part the other important thing which i will touch upon as we go on on is the famga or the big tech in terms of their investments uh, so here we are looking at google which is calico which age and age related diseases and verily which is on eye disease diabetes uh, heart disease parkinson's and so on and so forth so big big uh, takeaway from this slide change in lifestyles enabled by technology and multiple data centric models which is going to reduce the clinical waste and the waste in the health care life cycle and ecosystems being built around it moving on now if you look at artificial intelligence so the technology trends transforming healthcare artificial intelligence in healthcare is probably the most funded uh, space where ai is applied it is funded more than ai in life sciences uh, in sorry in the pfsi now there are three vectors of impact cloud and mobile data and ai and customer experience and three specific areas where healthcare in ai has been applied maximum which is home testing and we know that diabetes has been long tested at home though there are certain inaccuracies in the process but it's a reasonable method to get some relatively cheaper home testing done but it is getting expanded into other areas as well other therapeutic areas as much as telepathology and diagnosis which is getting totally reimagined which is the detection reimagining detection okay here are some use cases of uh, rapid home testing gauss which selects could do a gauss app and which scans the web to produce results whether you're covid positive or not in seconds similarly if you look at urine analysis the traditional urine dipstick computer vision algorithms are used to actually give you tests in uh, in in seconds which in a normal situation in a lab situation will take to 12 to 15 hours similar for future of blood diagnosis the cbc count which is about in bombay about an 18 to 24 hour procedure is being reduced to minutes so this is where by using computer vision and apps home analysis is becoming a central theme moving on telepathology fundamental change in mechanics now if on the left hand side you'll see the classic uh, workflow patient goes to lab biological sample treated a strain is treated by a pathologist and a highly skilled pathologist trained on the microsoft and and kind of do the diagnosis here in digital pathology image stage uh, an imaging device and a very high quality imaging device takes an image of a strain sample puts it on the cloud multiple pathologies see it and collaborate reducing the cycle time then i heard olympus is big 
Now it is expected to grow at a CAGR of 7% early days still, but this adoption is going to increase significantly over a 5 to 10 year period. Similarly, diagnosis, reimagining detection, MRI, CT scan, again using computer vision and deep neural networks, uh, and these are the companies uh, which, which actually predicts the prediction of Alzheimer's, cancer detection, cardiovascular abnormalities, IBM is playing a big role, so is Butterfly Network, Arterius and Ross. Now this, not only does this technology become very important, it reduces the cost of the scan significantly. The, the biggest uh, story around here is, and I'll skip a slide and talk about the big picture here. Pre-COVID, global telehealth market was 41.63% and it has grown by 91% by 2022 to 79, almost $80 billion and expected to grow at a CAGR of 25.8%. Indian telehealth market is estimated to reach $21 billion by 2025 and, in, and I talked about in 42 plus where preventive health care would go into a staggering 170 billion. So a country like India is going to spend 170 billion by 2025 for preventive health care as against reactive care. This has been obviously augmented by much aware uh, awaited telemedicine guidelines which come up in March 22 which facilitates the process of telemedicine. Now if you look at, now going back to this slide, Faster Care, now this company called Amwell. Amwell is significant and it's, it's in the B2B space where it actually uh, kind of um, creates programs with insurers to give very high quality telehealth services to people. Now this, this could be B2B, B2, D2C, B2B2C or whatever, like MD Life, uh, it, it could be on urgent care, critical care reactive care the entire gamut is now done through that in the indian context apollo 24 by 7 as an app has it has significantly led the indian telemedicine delivery process similarly the benefits of patients are because the cycle time comes down you can access high skill pressure from people in rural india where the tele uh, where the uh, health infrastructure is not so good it bridges the infrastructure issues between urban and rural india through artificial intelligence and digital technologies. So, and obviously reduces clinical waste, post-discharge care, ginger, meta health, and so on and so forth. Telehealth, big, big thing coming up in India. It is 21 billion by 2025, and telehealth and preventive care, 170 billion, ladies and gentlemen, by 2025, where it becomes a very, very significant industry. Now, this is digital health, uh, 150, the top 150, and this is being created by CB Insights, which are just picked it up from there. Uh, big thing around disease management and therapeutics, screening and diagnosis, drug discovery. Drug discovery is something which I will probably do uh, a video on, uh, you know, because the drug discovery process has become unviable for big tech, uh, big pharma, and therefore using artificial intelligence, also different levels of computing. How can drug discovery, the patient uh, recruitment program and the inefficiencies on that subject can be fundamentally shifted, uh, changed. So, so how, how oh, quantum computing is impacting does, does discovery clinical trials is a matter of, of great discussion and interest, uh, the, the interesting discussion and I'll bring it to you in soon, uh, uh, in, in a couple of months. Okay, the other important thing is we talked about Google and big tech uh, in pharma and in healthcare. We talked about Google in various three and Calico in the mega trend slide, but Microsoft is with the Humana partnership, with Novartis is changing it. Apple, uh, you know, announced sleep management and devices, and of course, Amazon through Pill Pack and Pharmacy, Whole Foods, the food part of it. Right now, if we come back to the Indian story again. Now the Indian story, Apollo is a great example, though they have uh, done away with Apollo Munich, uh, which is the health insurance part, but the diagnosis and clinics, the patient access and the offerings give an omni-channel view of healthcare, which is quite significant and uh, uh, remarkable. The point that is to be made in this context is the way healthcare is evolving, it is going to probably solve one of the most important problems that plague us Indians, which is 
which is the doctor to patient ratio the uh, health infrastructure and so on and so forth i would request you to look up ai uh, ai for all which is the niti aayog strategy around healthcare and how healthcare will be transformed using technology and digitization with that uh, it's almost 15 minutes and i will stop here if you have any questions or comments do write uh, to me or you know leave it on the youtube channel and i will respond to it the big big thing the big theme is healthcare is ripe for disruption classical models of healthcare will change good incumbents like apollo will give a omni channel response and big areas of healthcare and drug discovery is going to be disrupted by using uh, tools like quantum computing and so on and so forth with that wishing you all a very happy holi keep watching and send me your feedback and comments thank you for your time